Hi, Super Spruce here, and I know that this is a different type of video than usual, but I've been into tech lately, and I've been keeping up on it. In doing so, I've seen how strange and topsy-turvy the smartphone market is. Seriously, it's so upside down. It's a market where paying more can often get you less. Disclaimer, before I begin, I want to express that this is a rant, and this will be subjective and biased, as I have some strong opinions on this subject. The first strange thing is the removal of the headphone jack by almost every major brand in premium phones. This stupid trend was kicked off by Apple, who removed it to sell overpriced AirPods. As a business strategy, this is genius because it strongly incentivized consumers to pay for something that they originally didn't have to pay for, and that something was sold with huge profit margins. I'm no economics major. But I understand this is a big middle finger to consumers, and I also understand that the primary objective of businesses is to make money. This move was very beneficial to Apple. The topsy-turvy part is that when almost every other manufacturer tried to copy Apple. Let me repeat, almost every other manufacturer tried to copy Apple. This means that the headphone jack is almost extinct in premium phones. This is quite saddening, as nowadays, Bluetooth earbuds and Bluetooth headphones are commonplace, and there are, there are so many alternatives to the earbuds made by the smartphone companies. I swear some of these companies that are removing the headphone jack on their premium phones don't even have their own earbuds or headphones that they can sell for huge profit margins. And all of these, Companies are only ditching the headphone jack on the premium devices because luckily they understand that people who buy a $200 phone will not pay the same price for Bluetooth earbuds. But this creates the first topsy-turvy situation with the smartphone market. When you pay more, you lose the headphone jack. And it's not like the headphone jack is this broken piece of technology. It's been in existence for decades and decades and it just works. Remember that these same companies are spending more to put better speakers in their flagship phones, yet they are also getting rid of the superior method of transferring audio to your ear. Why superior? Bluetooth headphones have a very noticeable latency, are required to be charged up, and they deliver lower quality and just more inconsistent audio. It's not like that with the headphone jack. I mean, that, that technology has been there for decades. Yeah, it's not like with a headphone jack, you'd actually lose your Bluetooth capabilities so you, so you can't use Bluetooth headphones at all. The other arguments against the headphone jack are just plain stupid. A thinner phone? Really? Does anyone really care about a thinner phone? Or the headphone jack takes up space? Yeah, it does. It takes up that extra 100 milliamp hours of battery you that you wouldn't notice anyway. That's like 2% of your battery. Just give us the option to use wired headphones, please. At least these companies could maybe make a model with a headphone jack and without a headphone jack that are like the same thing. Actually, that increases costs. So, okay, from a business perspective, I get it. But still, it's so stupid that you get you remove this feature that is universal on the premium phones. Yet this is not the only weird thing about the smartphone market. It's also strange over the past couple of years, there's been this trend of ditching micro SD expansion on flagship phones. This takes even less space than a headphone jack, but is more understandable from a business stance. 128 gigabytes is quite a bit of storage, and expanding it is not as necessary as it was before when flagships had like 32 gigabytes of storage. And this gets people to pay up for more storage, or possibly even um, subscription-based cloud storage. This isn't particularly topsy-turvy, except one case really is topsy-turvy, and this is Samsung's flagships. The S10 line had between 128 gigabytes and one terabyte of expandable storage. This means you can expand it beyond the already one terabyte of like internal storage. Well, ne next year, the, the one terabyte edition didn't do really well, so next year it was dropped with the S20 line. These phones had between 120 gigabytes and 512 gigabytes of expandable storage. So, yeah, that is, that's normal. 
But then there came the really tricky part. This year, with the S21, the storage became non-expandable. It's still between 128 gigabytes and 512 gigabytes. Really, Samsung? Are you kidding me? Remember that these phones are marketed as being able to record at 8K resolutions, meaning that videos recorded in them can easily take up the phone's storage. Also remember that Samsung is one of the top manufacturers of the micro SD cards that they're ditching from their own phones. At least Samsung has their own cloud store. Oh wait, they just abandoned it. Okay, sadly, almost every other phone manufacturer is also doing the same with their micro SD expansion. You can still get it. You can still get micro SD expansion on lower end phones. That yes, they admittedly do have less storage, but really, like if you're marketing it as 8K footage, you probably want a place to put it rather than needing to go to your computer every month and putting it there. And th yeah, this is a feature I'm literally willing to pay a premium for. Yet when we do pay more, we get less storage. Seriously, my $120 Moto E can theoretically have more storage than a, a $1,200 Samsung S21 Ultra or even a $2,000 Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. Those max out at 512 gigabytes of non-expandable storage. The $120 Moto E I have has 32 gigabytes of internal storage and you can expand it up, uh, up to a 512 gigabyte micro SD card. This means that theoretically I can get 544 gigabytes of storage on my Moto E, which is more than those flagship ultra expensive phones. And look with that money, the $1,200 or even $2,000 can get you with a gaming PC. Speaking of Samsung, they also don't really care about a premium software experience with such an expensive phone because they serve the same ads in their first party software, no matter if you spend $100 or $2,000. If Samsung's profit margins are razor thins like Xiaomi's, I could accept it. But they aren't, especially with the high-end phones, or at least that's what I think. The ads appear in several first party apps, but the most egregious in my opinion are in the stock music player app and the phone app used for calling. If you aren't careful about your phone setup, you can also get ads in your notifications. You can't even pay to get rid of these ads. Even overpriced Apple phones don't pull this crap. Blows my mind that paying for a premium phone doesn't equal a premium software experience. The third topsy-turvy thing about the smartphone market. At least this one is explainable from a business standpoint, kind of. The next one isn't. This is the one I've been waiting for all video to rant about. I am going to be extra angry about this one, so get ready. It's about the removal of the charger in the box with the smartphone. I'm not even going to cover the bullshit excuses that companies make to justify this. Mr. Who's the Boss have already, already did this in a video that I'll link in the description. We all know that the purpose of this move is to just cut costs, which means higher profit margins. Now think with me for a second, where do you think this sort of cost cutting should be happening? Did you guess at the low end of the market? If so, you're absolutely correct. Not. Because smartphone companies have managed to flip the usual perceptions of the markets upside down with the removal of the charger on the box only on the premium phones. Why? What is this market? When we pay more, why are we getting less? I can believe how smartphone companies are increasing their profit margins, but I can't believe that this trend started with the flagship i the new flagship iPhone. Then it spread to flagship Samsung devices. And then Xiaomi, a very a manufacturer that with notably low profit margins, removes the charger in the box, but then allows it as a free option, which lowers their profit margins even more. This makes absolutely no sense at all. In a normal universe, this trend would have started with budget phones. 
because this charger in the box would cost much greater proportionally to the entire phone and it would just give them an edge in like how much they could they could sell it for a lower price. But no, this normal trend, this trend that should be normal, is happening in the most non-normal way one could expect. This case is the reason why I made this video about how topsy-turvy the smartphone market really is. In conclusion, the greedy, greediness of big smartphone manufacturers and the hive mind of them is turning the smartphone market on its head. When you pay more, you do gain some useful features like a 120Hz display, more RAM, and a faster chipset, but you also lose stuff that you got when you, when you paid less, like a headphone jack, expandable storage, which means more storage, and a charger in the box. Thanks for watching this entire rant, and I plan to do some more unorthodox stuff like this in the future. In the meantime, consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.